Well, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's great to have the Haney's back with us. Before they come, uh, I do want to say we have another anniversary, Gonzalo and Misty. Uh, ten years today. So yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I was uh, probably reading the yesterday's post on Facebook. But, uh, <laughs> anyway, it's, uh, it's, that's, that's great. That's a great accomplishment nowadays, isn't it? Ten years. Amen. And, uh, well, just all kinds of good things happening. And I just want to kind of reiterate uh, a couple things. Not it's sure Mike's what... birthday. Yes. Oh. Today. Mike's birthday today. <laughs> and uh, do, I know we had the announcements. I do want to remind you, though, that uh, youth... Uh, Friday the 8th, uh, not positive what we're going to be doing right now. i got a couple ideas, so kind of keep that in mind. Most of our youth are out today, but uh, uh, we want to, it's in most, not all. We, we have a couple of you in here. And uh, so anyway, uh, we uh, are looking forward to that. And then really important, we have done in a long, long time, and what you do on this Saturday depends on how long it will be before we do it again. Men's breakfast uh, on the 9th, it be, uh, I think, 9 o'clock. And uh, we'll give you the details on that next week. But keep that in mind, the 9th on a Saturday when we get together. And just be, Oh, I know the other thing I want to do. It's so good to have DR Yay! with us this yeah. morning. Yeah. Uh, for those of you that uh, maybe do not know DR, uh, uh, he has been working seven days a week forever. He works uh, two jobs, works at none better uh, during the week, and he's worked at Walmart every Saturday and Sunday. And uh, uh, I don't know. I don't think I don't know what he's going to do now that he has a life. You know. <laughs> but uh, anyway, so he we, we plan on seeing Dr. a lot more now that yes. he's not working every weekend. So uh, anyway, it's it's great to uh, have the Haneys with us. It's always a joy, and, and uh, I know that'll probably share a little bit. And then Chris is going to do something a little different this morning, which is really neat because it was in Cheryl in our spirit too that they would just maybe share some things. And, she had asked if she could just share some things this morning. And uh, so we're looking forward to that. And they'll also tell us some about their uh, ministry there in Scotland. And uh, they just got a great work going on. And I know uh, you'll appreciate it. And uh, at the end, we're going to give you an opportunity to give toward their ministry. Amen. So I know you're all excited about that. And uh, uh, when we do that, uh, you can just make that check out to Crosswalk Fellowship. And we'll be sure they get everything that comes in there. But... Uh, I'm looking so forward to it, and uh, in case they don't mention it, I'll say this much, and then I'm going to sit down. Uh, Ryan and uh, Chris, uh, we've known them for how long has it been now? Since 98? Eight. Yep. Since 98. Uh, they went to our church in Wisconsin where I was pastoring at the time, and uh, God's blessed them uh, over the years. Uh, they've been in the school of ministry, the, uh, missionaries over in Scotland. He, he's using them in a powerful, powerful way. and. Uh, it's just so good to have them with us to be able to, to share about that and, and to share what God's put on their heart. So let's just give them a hand. Yeah. Well, thank you, Pastor. Uh, thank you very much for allowing us to come and share with you today. Um, I'm going to wait a minute. Apparently he's getting something. Microphone. That's all right. Over it. <laughs> okay. right, well, thank you very much for allowing us to share today. Um, it is very cool, about 10 years. Mm -hmm. 10 years is a very cool thing. We're celebrating 10 years ourselves in Scotland. Right. So, there you go. Yeah. It's very yes. cool. Um, We're doing things completely different today, which is actually just fine with me. Um, and we'll see what my wife has to do with that in a minute. But thank you all very much. Thank you very much for um, allowing us to be part of the church. Thank you very much for allowing the ministry that we have to be part of the ministry that you have. Thank you very much for your prayer and your financial support. Um, nobody does anything by themselves. Nothing ever really gets accomplished by one person. And it's because of you that the things that are accomplished in Scotland are accomplished. And we just wanted to say thank you very much. Now we're going to change everything up, and I'm going to go back over there and sit down. And Chris is going to share something with you. All right, so if you know Ryan and I's personalities, um, 
Ryan is the one that he could wing it from here to kingdom come. I am the one that wants the, the whole chart, what's going to happen. Well, sometimes when God interrupts your plans, he interrupts your plans. And this is one of those times. Um, for me, I stand here and tremble just a little bit because I feel like God's giving me a word for the church. And this morning, when we woke up, of course it's storming, we were in Louisville, traveling over here, and first of all, I do not like thunderstorms. In Scotland, we don't have thunderstorms. And so all of the rain and the storms and the lightning, and then we're getting in a car. And you're trapped in there, you can't go anywhere. And so, didn't really appreciate all of the storms, but before we even got into the car, my Bible study for this morning had this scripture. And it says, everyone who hears my words and obeys them is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. It rained hard, the floods came, and the winds blew and hit that house. But it did not fail because it was built on the rock. Now everyone who hears my words and does not obey them is like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. It rained hard, the floods came, and the wind blew and hit that house, and it fell with a big crash. Now as we're going down the road, it's storming, it's storming, it's storming. I'm really, really nervous because I don't like it at all. And all of a sudden, this song came on the radio. It's called My Lighthouse. Who's that? Has anybody ever heard of it? Yes. Well, it's one of my favorite songs, actually. And in the words, it said, In my wrestlings and in my doubt, in my failures, you don't walk out. Your great love will lead me through, and you are my peace in the troubled seas. In the silence, you won't let go. In the questions, your truth will hold. Your great love will lead me through, and your peace is in, it, you are my peace in the troubled seas. So the part of it that really was speaking to me is further on, and it talks about how he carries us safe to shore. And that through all of the things that we fear and um, the troubles that we're having, the trials we're going through, you know what? God is still there yeah. through all of it. And all we have to do is hold his hand and go through the peace. And through the, God is with us, and the fire goes before us, and you're the brightest. And he will lead us through the storms. So the Bible verse that I wanted to share as well is from Psalm 73, 23 through 26, and it says, I still belong to you. You are my right hand. You guide me with your counsel, leading me to a glorious destiny. Whom shall I have in heaven but you? I desire you more than anything on earth. My heart may fail, my spirit may grow weak, but God remains the strength of my heart. He is forever mine. I just want you to know that his grace is sufficient for you. And I just really felt like there's somebody or somebody's that, you know what, you don't feel like you're, that, like his grace is sufficient for you, but I'm here to say it is. And that, you know, in the first scripture that I was sharing, it was talking about the wise men and the foolish men. If you're hanging out in the middle, that's a dangerous ground, and that you need to go to Jesus, because he's your peace. And he can help you through anything. That was my word. <laughs> well, over the years, Jesus has helped us with a lot of stuff. And uh, I appreciate that greatly. The, the things that we do at Overton House, the first thing that I wanted to tell you is that we have actually finished the fire escape. And it is built and painted and prepped and done and all that kind of jazz, and that is wonderful. However, I do have a rather large and major prayer request. The building control officer that we have been blessed with needs a revelation of who Jesus is. Or I may have to send him to meet him very shortly. <laughs> um, believe there's 98 acres. I can... Anyway, anyway. Um, he... Uh, he has been extremely obstructive, to say the least. And he was supposed to be out a couple of weeks ago, and on the day that he came out, he decided to send an email saying that we hadn't done some other stuff, so there was no point in him coming. 
And I can fill you in on the whole backstory of that. The pastor said I only have three hours, so I don't have that kind of time. Um, but quite honestly, the man needs a revelation of who Jesus is. And if that were to happen, when that is to happen, and I would like that to happen soon, um, he would start working with us, and he would start advocating for us, and we would be open already if that had already been the case. So as much as I would like to pray several other things in regards to this man, let's just start with the most important one, and everything else will we'll fill in after that. I don't have to worry about it. So the house is ready to open as soon as I can get the okay that it's ready to open from a structural standpoint. Um, we are waiting to bring in uh, young women and girls that uh, are in crisis, uh, trafficked women. Uh, the list is quite long of who would all qualify to come in. And the entire thing is completely ready to go as soon as this guy signs off on everything. So that's what I'm waiting on. Um, the other big thing that's going on, of course, is caring kids. We are in, currently, we're in two schools. Uh, they're great schools. We've been in one for seven years and one for five years. And to just give you an idea of some of the things that happen there, let's pretend that you're all kinder kids, so you're all between the ages of five and 12, okay? Well, I, actually, it's your birthday, so you've just aged out. I'm sorry, you're 13. Uh, 13. But you can hang out for just a minute, it's okay. All right, so over here is Lewis, and Lewis is eight. And please understand, Lewis doesn't talk in public. Now, he'll talk to Chris and I and Cassie uh, individually, but he doesn't talk in front of his classmates because Lewis gets picked on a lot and he gets made fun of a lot because Lewis has a speech impediment and he doesn't speak very clearly. So they make fun of him. So he doesn't talk. So we've been talking for a couple of weeks to the kids about how it is totally irrelevant how old you are and where you're from and all that kind of stuff. God would love to speak to you, but you simply have to be open and willing and available for him to speak to you. Because it's real simple. If you're not going to listen, well, what's the point of him talking? So we've done this for a couple of weeks, and all of a sudden, Chris, apparently I'm rubbing off, decides to go completely off script of what we're doing, and goes, I tell you what, we're going to take a minute, and everybody's just going to be real still and quiet. And we're going to sit there, and we're going to wait and see if God says anything to anybody. And so here we go. So we wait a minute. And kind of bring everybody back together. She goes, did anybody get anything that they'd like to share with anybody? Well, over here, Lewis raises his hand. Okay, Lewis. Lewis stands up and he says, God told me that everybody's special and it doesn't make any difference what size you are. He can use you no matter what. I thought that was pretty cool. I thought that was pretty cool on a couple of levels. First one, of course, God spoke to him. That's always wonderful. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with that at all. But what got me, even later, more so, was this. Here's an eight-year-old boy who is deathly afraid to do the one thing that he's going to be asked to do. And God put something in that little boy's heart that's so big, it is so much bigger than the fear that he has inside him, he simply cannot contain himself. Lewis is little. God is big. God doesn't care. Lewis was ready, and it just came out. Lewis could not simply contain himself. He had to stand up and let everybody know that God had spoken something to him. I think that is just an yeah. awesome thing. Amen. Amen. Now, when we plan for the trips, it takes a very, very long time because we end up traveling from northern Indiana all the way down to Florida and all kinds of points in between. And so we start the whole process somewhere around January, February. And in that time, um, you know, we need to make sure that we have enough funds to still pay for the things we need in Scotland and obviously our traveling expenses. And so it came about March time and our reports came through and it was like the lowest month we had had in a year. And I was like, oh, okay. And God said, trust me. I'm like, okay. So the next month came by and it happened again. And I was like, oh my word, what is going on? And again, I hear God say, trust me, and that he was going to do it a different way. Now, what that different way was, I had no idea. 
So time went on and time went on and time went on, and it came to the night before we were supposed to fly. And so, of course, you know, in my heart, I'm like, all right, you said trust you. You said to trust. So I was trusting weekly, but I was trusting. And um, we had a team there. There was a team of 40 people. And at the very end of the night, um, they called us forward. And they said that they wanted to bless us tonight. God just put it on their hearts to give us a gift. And that gift was exactly what we needed to be able to travel. So I say that only because... I want you to know that God does supply all of our needs, not just financially, but the scripture and this particular version I really, really like, and it's Philippians 4.19, I pray that God will take care of all your needs with the wonderful blessings that come from Christ Jesus. Well, we have um, three kids that come that are siblings, and that's Raina, Trent, and Anastasia. They have a, a younger sister who is not old enough for school yet, so she doesn't come. When they come to Kendrick Kids, and you know you don't have um, favorites, well, nobody else does. I do, <laughs> but um, and I, I love Trent and Raina uh, to pieces. You, you just can't help it. They come in and they're always so excited and they're just happy to be anywhere. It just doesn't make any difference where they are. They're just very happy people. And let's face it, I, I would much rather hang out with happy people than you know. Somebody has been, as my daughter would say, sucking on some lemons. So they come in one day, and they are just really not happy. And I can't figure out what's going on. So I said something to Chris about it, and Chris goes, well, let me, let me go talk to him. And so Cassie and I are kind of taking care of stuff, and Chris has got uh, the three of them off in the corner just asking them what's going on. Well, it turns out things are really, really rough at home. And um, Dad's been out of work. Uh, been looking for work for a couple of years and and uh, mom's really struggling with some of the things that are going on and, and unfortunately got to the point where the mom started to get violent now she never touched any of the children and she never touched her husband but uh, you know putting holes in walls and all the things that go along with that so chris said okay well let's talk about this what what is something that you can do right now to help your parents and it was Raina, wasn't it? And, and Raina goes, well, we can pray. There you go. That's an excellent place to start. And then Chris asks, she goes, what else can you do? I don't know. She looks at Trent. She goes, Trent, what's your bedroom look like? Uh, my bed's in it. What else is in it? Stuff. Where's that stuff at? Everywhere. Well, here's an idea, Trent. Why don't you go pick up your room? You know? Really? Here's an idea. Chris goes, I'll tell you what. You don't have to do all the dishes and all that kind of stuff. Next time you come through the living room and you see a plate sitting there, pick it up and take it into the kitchen for your mom. Take care of something for your dad. Because you know what? It's hard work being a mom and a dad. It's really hard work being a mom and a dad. There's four of you and there's only two of them. So anything that you could do that would help them, do that. But also continue to pray for them. So she said, well, on a scale of 1 to 10, with 10 being the best, 1 being the worst, what would you say it's like in your home right now? And Trent's like, 2. Okay. So about six weeks would go by, and Chris is meeting with him every single week during kinder kids for just a couple of minutes to ask him how it's going, to explain to them what we've been praying about and praying for the family. But at the end of six weeks, been a few changes. Number one, dad's got a job. Number two, Chris goes, what would you say on a scale of one to ten, what it's like now? Trey goes, oh, it's an eight. Easy. The idea that it's not about just the kids, but it's what the children take home is an awesome thing. And the idea that their first answer is, what is something you can do for your parents? Well, I can pray for my parents. Well, of course you can. Because it doesn't make any difference. Just as Lewis explained earlier, it doesn't matter how old you are, and it doesn't matter what your size is. God loves you, and He still has something planned for you. Amen. During Kinder Kids, which is happening at the schools, uh, we are able to teach Bible verses, have worship, 
um, do puppets, all of that. And basically the principals say that is as long as you say that it's a Christian club, the parents have been warned. So we can pretty much wide open bring um, the, the Bible and all of God's word into the schools. And one particular day, we were kind of short on adults, and um, I look over here, we're doing worship. Now when we do it in the schools, we always do the actions to the songs, just a way of getting the kids even more encouraged to worship. So over here, there's these two little boys, and they are running amok. They're just running all over the place, and you know, you try as an adult, and I used to be able to do this, kids, and actually, our son can attest that Cheryl was able to make a child move from one side of the church to go up and sit down and sit on the other side. I remember that. <laughs> That's a gift from the Lord. <laughs> well, I didn't have that gift, and they were just running muck, and I just didn't know what to do because I had to keep on doing the actions. Well, um, what I did then, as I was doing the actions, I just closed my eyes and started to pray. It's the only thing I knew I could do. And you know what? Even in the midst of all the craziness, that God honored the prayer, and the boys started to worship with us. And afterwards, I had Brogan come up to me, and she said, were you praying? And I said, yes, I was. And she said that she prays like that. She prays for her mom like that. And what she said is that I pray for my mom like that, and there's a lot of sadness in my home. And sometimes I can help her, but sometimes I can just pray because God's the only one that can help. And she also said she loves coming to Kindred Kids and thank you for everything that you teach me. Every week they get a Bible verse that's in their heart. And that who knows when all of those verses, um, when they're needed most, come up. Um, broken in her family, um, her mom's a single parent and her grandmother's been in the hospital for quite some time. So at 11 years old, her responsibilities at home are great. I mean, she is told to cook and clean and do the laundry and everything because mom is helping care for grandmother. So, but even though she wasn't able to come the last few weeks, she would always stop in and she would always kind of give me an update and always ask to keep on praying for her. And it's just awesome that she trusts me enough to, in order to do that, to share those things that she wouldn't just share with everybody else. Okay, well, Tony Lee, at the end of this story, it'll be ready for the uh, video. So just to give you a heads up there. Thank you. All right, well, uh, Ross is 11. He is the single greatest evangelist ever to come out of Kindred Kids. And he will tell everybody about Jesus. And I do mean everybody. If you long enough, he's going to talk to you about it. And you're going to make sure you're all squared up and ready to go. The problem is, it's a good problem to have, is that Ross is really adamant. And if, if you're not ready, he's confused as to why you're not ready. <laughs> so frequently we give opportunities for the children to accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Well, to give you an idea, uh, just in the month of March, thank you, <laughs> halfway through the trip, I finally got the month right, um, we had 56 children accept the Lord for the very first time. And now, Ross has done this a while ago, I'd say probably two or three years ago now. And Ross was born addicted to drugs, and he had the attention span of a gnat. <laughs> and he would sit on the floor and spin. And I don't mean just slowly. I mean, I tried to demonstrate it actually last night at church and I did about three spins and got dizzy. I mean, he's just going, he, he could not concentrate, nothing. Well, at one point during one of the worship times, actually, God spoke to him in a vision, told him the way to go, that was it. Done. Doesn't spin, none of that stuff. Completely delivered from all of the junk that was on it. I think that's fantastic. Yeah. I think what's even better is the fact that Chris and I weren't like praying for him or anything. He was just over here singing and all of a sudden, you know, everything lined up and he was ready and God was already ready and, and it just happened. Wow. So he's sitting there. We give this opportunity for the children to accept the Lord. Now, his friend Colette has been coming all five years that um, we've had kids, or kids at that school. And so there we are. And of course, you know, you're supposed to close your eyes and raise your hands so that nobody's looking around. Well, Ross can't do that. That's the only thing he's having delivered from. 
<laughs> because he's excited. This is this is a big deal to him. So he's looking around, and several children are raising their hands, but Colette is not. And Ross is getting upset because she's his friend. And he knows who Jesus is. He's a medic, and he wants her to understand who Jesus is. So he's telling her, come on, come on. So finally, actually, Chris had to step in and say, Ross, you cannot make that decision for her. She has to make it for herself. And he was gutted. I mean, he was really, really upset about it. So about three weeks later, we, we give this opportunity again because it's the last full kinder kiss before the break in the, the summer. Unfortunately, Ross was not there because I felt really bad about this because Chris finished and asked people if they wanted to have Jesus as their Lord and Savior, and up pops Colette's hand. That was five years in the making. And um, Pastor and Cheryl stuck with us for a lot longer than five years. So, you know, a lot of work and a lot of effort and a lot of love and a lot of care went into that moment for Colette. And I think it's awesome that God doesn't give up on us. Yeah. So we don't give up no matter what the results can be. Every year at the end of the school years, um, a lot of times the Her Majesty's inspector will come and inspect the different schools. And we have been uh, inspected in the past at Levenvale, which was our second school. And this year it happened to be at Aikenbar. So Her Majesty's inspector asked us many questions. And at the end of it, um, kind of holding your breath because you don't know exactly what the outcome is, and the head teacher, the principal, sent us an email, so I want you to know what she said. It says, a huge thank you from everyone in Aikenbar for your wonderful, wonderful contribution again this year. The school was recognized by Her Majesty's Inspector as one of the best schools in Scotland, and everyone has a part to play in this accolade, yourselves included. That means yourselves included, because you're partnering in ministries with us. Um, if you'd like to become a partner, there, you can talk to Ryan and I afterwards. There's a newsletter sign-up sheet in the back. There's business cards that are there at the very bottom. If you just want to look at our newsletters, um, the web address is at the bottom. If you'd like to start partnership, again, um, you just use that link as well. One of the main things that we're doing, um, sorry Ryan, one of the main things we are doing this particular trip is we're raising funds for a new to us car. The van, that minivan we have now, there's, it's doing fine and it's been a huge blessing for us. However, with gas that's $10 a gallon, we need to have something more economical. So when I was looking at all of the finances as far as how much it runs, to how much it takes to run the van versus something like a Ford Focus, we would save $3,000 a year if we got a smaller car. So we're just asking that you pray for that need for us. And Philippians 1, 3 through 5. Every time we think of you, we give thanks to our God. Whenever we pray, we make our request for all of you with joy. For you have been our partners in spreading the good news about Christ. Together we are raising up a new generation. Together we are seeing families change. We're seeing families come together in a way that they have not been together before. We have seen schools change. When we started a Aikenbar, trust me when I can tell you this, it was not one of the top schools in the Scottish school system. Now that has something to do with us, and it has a whole lot to do with the Lord. He's come in there, and He's done a work in a way that I cannot even begin to describe at times. All we can do is give you some of the stories of how He's impacted that school and the families in that school. We get to do something as a group that, quite honestly, no other group gets to do. And that's watch people change from the inside out. And we are tremendously honored. To give you a little background, you need to understand, Pastor and Cheryl were in Wisconsin for two years. Okay. 
I know exactly why they were there. Chris and I are exactly why they were there. Okay. My wife got saved the first time she went to church. Took me a little bit longer. I got saved in my own house. Pastor Tony came over and prayed for my wife. She was so incredibly ill, I was scared to death. I had two small children. I didn't know what to do. I've been to seminary. I spent four years in Catholic seminary. Trust me, I've read the big book. I've read the book, book many times. Apparently the big book didn't mean a whole lot to me. He came over one night, and in fact Cheryl and the rest of the family weren't even in Wisconsin yet. And he made it there. That's how new he was to the area. I was so scared. The only thing I could think of is I told her, I said, you want me to call Pastor Tony and have him come over and pray for you? Well, he came over. I think, I don't know if I'd actually met you before you came in the house. He came in. We prayed in the spare room where Chris was. She couldn't even get out of bed. She is just coming off of a surgery. Had a lot, a lot of complications. And right as he finished, he said, you're going to feel 100% better tomorrow. I know I'll do it. Isn't that just wonderful? Thank you for stopping. Chris in her heart said, yeah, but I don't think you understand what's going on. And then she added on the second part of that, God, if you heal me, I'll tell people. Well, quite honestly, I think I've told more people than she has. Because it was at that moment, there's a phrase that I don't know as if I ever used personally, but I've heard it many times, and it's this one. If God wants me, he knows where I'm at. What a load of book. Because you know what? God always knew where I was at. But that night, he knew I was finally ready. And that one moment, from 1998, changed the course of an entire family. And consequently, a whole area in Scotland. When you invite people to church, when you invite people to groups, men's breakfast, ladies' events, youth events, whatever, you never have a clue as to the impact that that might make in the long run. Please, as you continue to invite people, as Chris was invited many, 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 many times, and finally caved in simply to get the woman off her back to stop inviting me, one time, she showed up one time, you never know. You simply never know. We will probably never know on this side. But someday we will get the chance to find out. All those little things that you've done for neighbors, co-workers, people at school, all of those places that you come into contact with people, all those people you interact with, all those moments. When you really wanted to say something else, and by the grace of God, he kept you from saying that, and you said something more appropriate, something kinder, something more encouraging. You never know. So thank you very much. Thank you very much for helping us to be part of the Great Commission. Thank you, Pastor. I just want to say uh, one other word about Scotland. Uh, you know, why Scotland? You know, Christianity is not near as prevalent in Scotland as it is here. Here you have a church on every corner, pretty much literally, and opportunities galore to know Christ. It's not exactly that way in Scotland. And, uh, so the Hades and the ministry they're involved with truly is a light in that area of the world. And uh, that's why Scotland. And, uh, I'm excited about this new phase. They've been working toward it for a long time, about the, the, un the uh, women in crisis. Uh, I just have a feeling that it's going to just go off like gangbusters and, and minister to a lot of women. So uh, continue to keep them in prayer. And we appreciate you guys and all that you do. And uh, we also want to give you an opportunity, if you would like to be a, a further blessing to their ministry, uh, we're going to receive an offering here in just a moment. And again, if you uh, are making out a check, you can just make out a crosswalk, and we will 
uh, uh, see that they get uh, all that comes in in this offering. So let's pray for the Haney's and let's pray over this offering. Father, we thank you <clears throat> so much for your goodness and oh, we thank you for this opportunity. I, I just feel your, your favor upon Ryan and Chris and Cassie. And Lord, I just pray that you would just continue to bless them. Lord, as they make their travels here in the States, I pray, God, that you would just open doors and open hearts. And Lord, again, as Cheryl prayed earlier, just keep your hand of protection upon them as they travel. And Lord, just uh, bless them uh, as they come and as they go. And Lord, we're just careful to give you all the praise for what you're doing. And Father, as we receive this offering, Lord, I just pray that you would speak to us and what we need to do. And Lord, that uh, you would just uh, uh, increase and uh, uh, add to that which is given. And we're careful to give you all the glory. Everybody said? Amen. Amen. Amen.